welcome to the Next in Line podcast, where we are helping to prepare you for whatever is next in line. As always, I'm your host, Chance Pitts, and I would like to thank you for tuning in to this episode. Guys and gals, as always, a little bit of housekeeping. If you receive value from the episode that we put out today or any other episode on the podcast, please make sure you're sharing the show with like-minded people who might be able to get the same kind of benefit. Guys, we don't do any advertising. I don't push it on social media as hard as we could. So I really want to make sure that we're doing our part to share the lessons learned in this show with people who could benefit it. That's going to be the fastest and most efficient way for us to grow and hit the biggest audience possible and help the most people that we can. Uh, And that's our overall goal, guys. That's what we want to do. We want to help you develop. We want to help you reach your full potential. And the best way for us to, to continue that movement is through word of mouth, through subscribing on whatever platform you're listening on, and leaving ratings and reviews. Guys, also, if you're not keeping up with us, there's been some really good content that we put out on social media. That's at Next In Line Development on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And if you're not there, you did not see the newest TikTok that we put out that was an awesome example of just determination and mental strength of my wife actually out on her second workout of 75 hard the other day. Make sure you go check that out, especially on TikTok for that one, guys. Well, we are back in here with another thoughtful Thursday, and life's been kind of throwing me some different curveballs here lately, so I thought I'd talk about that with y'all today. And lately, I've been feeling like I've been kind of getting picked on by everything in my life, whether it's work, whether it's my finances, whether it's... uh home life and some of the things we've had going on with the storms blowing through and causing some issues for us. And uh, I feel like I'm being tested a whole lot in these situations. And I feel like I'm getting thrown a lot of negativity as well. And it's just trying to give me reasons to uh, make a mistake or slip up or, you know, even just decide to give up on something I'm trying to do. I've got a lot of irons in the fire right now, so it'd be easy to walk away from one, but I know I can't do that. Because guys, whenever I stop and I slow down and I I really think about things, there's a really important distinction that has to be made with those issues that I'm seeing with my life and the negativity that I'm seeing pop up here and there. And that distinction starts with a question, is life really throwing a lot of negativity at me? Is it throwing me all these tests and these trials and these obstacles I'm trying to navigate? Or am I putting these in my own way? Either way, I think there's a lot of lessons that we can take out of these situations. So today, I really wanted to dive into that and talk to you all about recognizing a side of the negativity that we really don't see. And that's the self-inflicted negativity that we do to ourselves through predetermined outcomes. So guys, think about this. What are you actively seeking out every single day in your life? Do you even know what you're truly out there looking for? And I'm not talking about with goals. I'm not talking about with your career. I'm not talking about the promotions you're chasing, the aspirations that you have in your life. No, I'm talking about something a little bit different today. I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about here. The other day I was driving with my wife down the road and I was really relaxed. I wasn't really paying attention and we got into some traffic. And a lot of brake lights popped up in front of us real quick. Traffic got really thick. And I think we were going through Austin at the time whenever I slammed on the brakes to uh, avoid rear-ending a car in front of us. And my wife said something like, babe, watch out. And, you know, as a guy being criticized in my driving, it bothered me a little. I'm not going to lie to you. But I didn't say anything the first time that popped up. So we continued down on our way to Central Texas. And then traffic got backed up again as we come into the backside of Belton, and I had to hit the brakes pretty hard again. And my wife at this point says, babe, in that tone that, you know, makes you feel like you are being accused of murder. You know, it's it's such a negative connotation and it's aggressive towards you. And it just, I don't know what it is, but it turns your blood, it boils your blood, and it gets you so worked up and riled up and you just get very frustrated and because of that we got in a heated debate because I felt like I was paying attention I felt like I had all my bearings about me but it was just a situation that was unavoidable and I thought her reaction was out of context in some ways and so we kind of got into a little debate and a little bickering back and forth 
And I tell that story right there, not because of the interaction we had, not because of the argument, the bickering, the not paying attention, but instead what happened right after that conversation. Because right after that conversation, for the next half hour or so, I started driving a little bit more aggressive on purpose. I was hitting the brakes a little bit harder than I should here and there. I was getting a little bit closer to cars in traffic. Definitely not anything dangerous. I was not driving recklessly. I was not driving any way that was going to cause an issue at all. It wasn't going to put us in any kind of potential danger, but it was just a little bit more careless than someone would normally drive. And I found myself pushing that envelope and I was waiting for her to call me out again. And why was I doing this? This was just because I wanted to have a combative situation pop back up. I wanted another argument. I wanted to be frustrated. I wanted to take my anger out on the situation on her. I wanted an opportunity to get mad at her for yelling at me because she yelled at me the first time. I wanted, Like I said, I wanted to take my frustrations out on this whole situation. And I know I'm not the only one that does this. I know a lot of guys that find themselves in these very situations dealing with these same kinds of things. And guys, it's something we all do. When we're passionate about something or when we get annoyed with something or angry, we just look for a reason to get more upset and more angry. And we expect things to not go our way and we wait for an opportunity for us to be able to have that blow up and to get upset with whatever it is or whoever it is in that situation. But why do we do this? Why do we carry that chip around on our shoulders? Why do we want to get even so badly? What good does that even do for our lives? And more importantly, guys, who does that serve? Because it's certainly not us. I mean, sure, we get our little bit of revenge. We achieve the goal we're wanting to achieve of trying to find a reason to be upset. But even if we get that revenge and even if we achieve that goal, what are we left with? We're left with two pissed off people in a situation and really No shot at a positive outcome coming from any of that. And yeah, we might get a little bit of validation from the situation of being right, getting the thing that we wanted and expected to happen. But even with that, being right is not a good enough reason to celebrate that situation. It's not a good way to be excited about a situation that's bad or something not going our way at all and and leading down a path that it really doesn't need to go down. And there's another example of that because I know that one might not be uh, might not be relatable for everybody, but this is one that definitely I think is. I work in a situation where I receive phone calls uh, with people's problems every single day, and I just work to solve them over and over and over until about six o'clock in the evening, and then it pauses until about six o'clock in the morning, and we start all over. So. A lot of times what I'll see is I'll see a name or a number pop up on my phone. And as soon as I see that name or number pop up, there is a preconceived, predetermined outcome that pops straight into my brain. And guys, it's always that same number. And y'all know the number I'm talking about. It's that one guy that always brings his problems to you. And he always makes more work for you at the worst possible times. And as soon as you see that name or that number pop up on your phone, you, like I said, get that predetermined judgment passing through your brain and it jades you to the situation before you even find yourself going through it. And we all know that guy that I'm talking about. Like I said, it, it's a situation we don't want to be a part of, but here's the plot twist. That dude could be calling with good news. But even at this point, if he's calling with good news, we won't even be able to celebrate that. We won't even be able to be happy with that situation because we've already trained our brains to be expecting the bad news. And now we're in a bad mood. We're already expecting the worst thing to happen. And I use these two examples. I use that example of the phone call right there. And I use the example of driving with my wife to propose a different question for y'all. Those are my two examples, but what predetermined outcomes have you already established in your life? And how are those predetermined outcomes getting in the way of your success? Have you predetermined that today's going to suck before you even get into work because somebody's going to do something that is going to mess up your day or bother you? Have you predetermined 
kind of like I did in that situation, that someone's going to call you and they're going to ruin your day with their problems at the worst time possible. Have you predetermined that when you get home from work, your spouse or your kids, they're going to do something that gets on your nerves and they're going to annoy you because they don't understand what you go through to provide for them every single day. They don't understand all the stress that you're under with your job and being in your position as a provider. What about the things within yourself that are predetermined outcomes. Have you predetermined that you're not going to be able to stick to your diet plan and that you're going to fail today? Have you decided already in your brain that you're going to skip that workout? You're not going to go to the track or the gym or go for that walk in the evening. You've already let yourself fail. Guys, what about in your career? Have you already predetermined that someone else is going to get that promotion or that you're not going to be even in the running for it? Or maybe that you're not ever going to be able to get out and start your own business and dive into entrepreneurship like you dream about doing? Well, guys, whatever it is, whatever predetermined outcomes you've put into your life, let me be the first person to tell you that whatever tone that you set for yourself, if you've already put those thoughts into your mind, then congratulations. You are right. You're going to have that bad day. You're going to fight with your spouse and be upset with your kids. You're going to feel trapped and you're going to hate your job and your career. You're going to skip that workout and you're going to fail that diet. If you've decided those things in your head, you've already predetermined the outcomes of them, that's exactly what is going to happen. But guys, don't stop there because there's great news. The predetermined outcomes that you have in your life work both ways. And there's power in having faith in yourself. There is power in believing in the opposite side of what we just talked about, in believing in positive outcomes. And it starts with just a single choice, guys. It starts with a choice to see the good in every single situation. A choice to have a good day regardless of how much crap life throws at you or your job throws at you or whatever else it is that seems to disrupt your day and make it less than satisfying. It is a choice to have a good day. Day. It is a choice to follow through on all of the things that you set your mind to do. Guys, you have the power. You've always had the power. So now it's time to put that power to use. Start right now. Instead of approaching these different situations in life and thinking what's going to go wrong, you need to think to yourself today, how can I make it go right? Guys, thanks for tuning into this episode of Thoughtful Thursday on the Next in Line podcast. I hope this gives you the strength and the willpower to take on the rest of this week and get to the weekend and attack it as well. Guys, remember, please, please, please share the show with people who you think might benefit from it. That's going to help us grow. That's going to help us reach a larger audience and help more people. Make sure you're following us on social media. That's at Next in Line Development on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And always be prepared for whatever is next in line.